Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion and today as you can see from the title, we are going to be talking about the best fashion moments in sports history and I'm specifically talking about American athletes in this video. We're going to go over 10 of my personal favorite fashion and beauty moments in mostly Olympic history. All of the athletes I'm going to mention are Olympians but not every single one of these outfits are from the Olympics. Since the Olympics are going to be this summer, I thought why not talk about some awesome female athletes. Also the day this is going up is the 4th of July, so I figured why not show the only time I'm ever patriotic, which is when a British person is talking, <laughs> like don't make me put your tea in the harbor, and when the Olympics come around. That is when I'm like, ah, like rock flag eagle, like yeah, USA. Big reason why I wanted to do this video in general is that my boyfriend commented that I have a kind of a tomboyish personality, like when I speak or just like my interests besides fashion and stuff, but I my packaging is very hyper feminine and he's just like, you train for half marathons and like you're rolling around with animals, but like you do it in like dresses and whatever. And that's why I wanted to highlight these women in the first place because there's nothing more badass than being at the top of your sport and doing it in like a hyper feminine way when so often femininity is like punished or ridiculed. All of my workout gear is like pink and frilly and floral because when I'm like being strong in Pilates or like beating a new PR in my running and it's not despite being a woman, it's like because I'm a woman. It's like because I'm, I'm working hard and I love like having that femininity when I'm feeling strong and badass in sports. So. If you like fashion and fashion commentary in general, then make sure to subscribe to this channel because I post videos every Thursday. And with that, let's get into it. So I'm gonna go in just chronological order rather than like my favorites because I can't, I can't pick favorites. So the first one is Peggy Fleming. Peggy Fleming is a figure skater and she competed in the 1968 Olympics. She ended up winning the only US gold medal the, at that Olympics in France. She wore her iconic chartreuse dress, which was actually made by her mother, Doris, and had been hand sewn. This was the first time the Olympics had been broadcasted in color. So the chartreuse with the rhinestones just popped so much. And again, since she was the only person to win a gold that Olympics for the US, it just made it all the more iconic. The next one is from 1973, and you probably have heard of her. It is Billie Jean King. In 1973, this very misogynistic, older tennis player, Bobby Riggs, was saying that the female version of the sport was so inferior that even at his age of 55, he could defeat their best athlete. And Billie Jean King decided to take him up on his offer. She initially declined, but then she was just like, you know what, let's do it. And they competed for $100,000 and it was known as the Battle of the Sexes. On September 20th, 1973, 50 million people in the US and an estimated total of 90 million people worldwide tuned in to watch the Battle of the Sexes. It is one of the most watched sporting television events of all time. Billie Jean King ended up beating Bobby Riggs, wearing the iconic tennis dress designed by Ted Tingling. It was actually a, the backup dress that Tingling had designed for the match. After King declared the original was too scratchy, he modified the more modest menthol green and sky blue outfit by adding rhinestones around the neckline. Worried that the harsh lights of the Astrodome would wash out his creation, he sewed on the rhinestones the morning of the match. This transformed women's tennis style in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, introducing players to color, embellishment, and form-fitting, flattering silhouettes. We have two instances from the 1988 Olympics, one of which is Flojo. Florence Griffith Joyner was a young girl and she was fascinated by fashion and would sew clothing for her dolls. Her passion for beauty came when she was in high school and worked in a nail salon while prepping for the 1988 Olympics. For the game, she made history to become the first black woman to win four gold medals at a single game. Flojo gave herself a special set, bedazzled red, white, and blue nails to represent Team USA with two gold nails symbolizing her hope of bringing home the gold. She left the Seoul Games 
with three gold medals and one silver. She also appeared at the World Championships in 1987 in Rome wearing a hooded speed skating bodysuit. In April 1988, she wore a running suit with the right leg of the suit extending to the ankle and the left leg being cut off a style called the one-legger. The running suits had bold colors as, such as lime green and purple with white bikini bottoms and were embellished with lightning bolts. The star-spangled six-inch nails in a running suit spoke to her gold-winning mantra, quote, dress to look good, look good to feel good, and feel good to run fast. And the iconic photos of her nails with the medals and running just goes down in Olympic history because it's nail culture and especially like long nails, embellished nails, is so intertwined with black culture. And so the fact that she is just being unapologetically black and feminine and literally becoming the fastest woman in the world, oh, love it. We have some more black girl magic in the 1988 Olympics with Debbie Thomas. She was the first African-American athlete to earn a medal in the Winter Olympics when she took home the bronze in women's figure skating in 1988. Prior, she was the 1986 world champion. In the 1988 Winter Olympics, she competed in a black beaded unitard. It caused such a controversy that the International Skating Union put a temporary ban on costumes without skirts. It's since been lifted. And this was called the wit rule, which was after the other competing athlete who was in like a very embellished over the top little like skating costume. I just, that stuff makes me so mad because how are you gonna like, she's one of the best athletes in the world and this is what you're focusing on. You're focusing on just because her legs are covered and there's just a, such a running theme of in women's sports, how skimpy the uniforms are compared to men's sports. A really notable one is beach volleyball. I know the J Japanese team and I believe Norway, both women's teams protested and like the bikinis that they were forced to wear. And I think one of the teams got banned and it's just like in gymnastics is also a very common thing of like, why do women have to wear these like skimpy unitards when the men's gymnastics team don't? It's like a whole discussion, but the idea of like punishing this black woman who's representing her country, being one of the best skaters in the entire world, and like, just because she's wearing a unitard is so frustrating and is so like, that wouldn't happen to a man. <laughs> this next one is one of my favorites. It is Michelle Kwan in the 1998 Olympics. If you were like a 90s, 2000s kid, you definitely remember this. That same year as the 1998 Olympics, My Date with the President's Daughter came out on Disney Channel. And I know this seems like a tangent, but the iconic pink velvet dress in that movie totally looks like Michelle Kwan's Vera Wang design dress, which is just so gorgeous. She sits as the most decorated figure skater, male or female in the United States having won 43 championships. Vera Wang said that her outfits had to have, quote, give her a feeling of freedom. She needed to feel she was almost in a bathing suit. She didn't want anything near her neck. She had to feel extra that her neck was free. She didn't like skirts with volume. She felt when she rotated in the air, any extra fabric was a burden. The two remained so close that Michelle Kwan wore Vera Wang to her wedding in 2013. And fun fact, Vera Wang was also a figure skater. She almost made it to the Olympics but sadly didn't. And it kind of like derailed a lot of her life. And she, that's when she turned to designing. So love to Asian American women coming together who are exceptional, literally at the top of their field to make magic. Yes. Again, I don't get patriotic, but the Olympics, women in the Olympics, Eagle screech, eagle screech all day. The next one is in 1999. And this is an interesting one because it's not so much fashion, but it does have to do with clothing. And in 1999 at the FIFA World Cup final, there was a penalty shootout to give the United States a championship against China. Brandy was chosen to do the penalty kick and she made it. And to celebrate, she took off her shirt, slid on her knees like in her Nike sports bra and celebrated. Now, if you watch Premier League soccer or Champions League soccer or any professional men's soccer, this is very common. Men celebrate and do all kinds of things with their uniforms 
out on the field. Sometimes it warns a yellow card, but it is very like common anyway. But of course, because Brandy was a female, it came off as like arrogant. The moment did, however, end up with an iconic photo that ended up being on Sports Illustrated. It was described in the New York Times as the most iconic photo ever taken of a female athlete. Chastain described the celebration as, quote, momentary insanity, nothing more, nothing less. I wasn't thinking about anything. I thought, this is the greatest moment of my life on the soccer field. The next is Serena Williams, who I kind of think I just have to do a whole video on. Serena Williams' tennis court fashion. She is such a trailblazer when it comes to fashion on the tennis court, not to mention she's literally one of the world's greatest athletes like that we've ever seen. She is incredible. My favorite moment was the US Open in 2004 when she wore this iconic Nike denim outfit. It is so 2004, it is so fitting. I, oh. Serena Williams said, quote, this is when Nike was introduced. I think all the outfits I wear and they say, what was your favorite? This one was always top three. I remember telling Nike, if I'm switching to you guys from Puma, I want more pizzazz. I said, I love what Andre Agassi wore when he wore jean shorts. I want to wear a jean skirt. And so we designed this great jean skirt. It was jean fabric, but very light because it had to be able to perform. I like to put on a rebel look when I'm being really rebellious. I'm just doing things different with the black and the studs. You know, the armband, I wear it up here. I'm just being a rebel. So maybe I would start out with something like Sarita's going rebel without a cause. The next one I definitely remember, it is the 2012 Olympics and the 2012 Olympic gymnastics team was just something. It was a moment. It was a moment. It was amazing. It was, it was rare. I was there. I remember it all too well. Like, ugh. Many of the Olympic gymnastics team that year wore non-red, white, or blue leotards including this like bright pink, like hot pink Leo that Gabby Douglas wore as well as a couple of the other athletes. She is the 2012 all around gold medalist Olympic champion. She made history at London in 2012, becoming the first black gymnast to win an Olympic title. She also became the first American to win all around team golds at the games. Conservative media, including Fox News, which in the United States is just a fear-mongering tabloid news channel, was calling Gabby Douglas and the other Olympic athletes unpatriotic for wearing hot pink at the Olympics. They said, quote, what's wrong with showing pride? What we're seeing is this kind of soft anti-American feeling that Americans can't show our exceptionalism. Frankly, if they're offended about showing our exceptionalism, then they have that right and I don't care and neither do most Americans. Because Gabby Douglas was sort of the face of this Olympic team, because she was the all-around Olympic athlete, she was the one that broke these records for the Americans and everything, she got the brunt of it. And it's just like, again, same with like Debbie Thomas. Like you're bullying this black woman for what she's wearing, despite representing your country in the most like exceptional stage in the world. And it's like, I mean, Fox News is awful in general, so it's not surprised that they did that. But the idea of calling an Olympic athlete who won and gave Americans medals that they never had before, on American is just like, it's insane. The way we treat black women and minority women in this country, and just women in general in this country, is disgusting. But like, not even, as an Olympic athlete, can black women escape racism? It's just horrible. Anyway, we're talking about black girl magic and we can't talk about that without Simone Biles. Simone Biles is the greatest gymnast to ever live. She has smashed every record and has multiple barely impossible moves named after her. In 2019, she wore a leotard with a rhinestone goat on it to represent goat, the greatest of all time, which is what everybody calls her. And it is true, like she is, like by definition, the greatest gymnast of all time right now. In 2021 at the US Classic, she wore a different leotard with a goat head. In this competition, she did an unprecedented double Yurchenko on the vault. She said, quote, everybody can tell you you're the goat, but then if you acknowledge it once, they're like, oh my God, I hate her. She's not that awesome. I don't think it's fair that you can stand behind the computer and talk all that smack. And I just take it as an athlete. 
So it was kind of just to push back and just to piss them off. So in the end, we won. People loved it, they hated it, I loved it. Lo I love Simone Biles' energy. She's not taking crap from anybody and she shouldn't because she's literally the greatest gymnast of all time. And last but not least, we have Shakari Richardson. She is a runner who was disqualified from the 2020 Olympics because they traced cannabis in her system, which A, is stupid. Her mom had just passed during the Olympic trials. And B, that's not a performance enhancing drug. Smoking in your lungs to go run something that slows you down, something that inhibits you. You're saying that's not a performance enhancing drug. And I get it, like rules are rules, but it is so stupid because she literally broke the record as like the fastest woman in the world. So, but despite all this, she is coming back and she is gonna be on in this year's Olympics, which is so exciting. She said, quote, I just want the world to know that I'm that girl. You need to make a statement. Richardson went on to earn the title of the world's fastest woman after she set a record time and placed first in the 100 meter race in the World Track and Field Championships in Budapest, Hungary in August 2023. The color is based on how I feel, she explained. Like the red puts me in a very dominating mood and sometimes I feel that can be overwhelming. So when I need to calm down, I have my black hair. The black calms me down and makes me blend in instead of be extra. Shakari is known for not only her bright hair, but her full lashes. She's almost always in a full beat on the track and her massive nails. And a lot of people were comparing her to Flojo. She said in an Instagram post, y'all love talking about my hair and nails like the greatest woman to ever have entered the game didn't run in style. And again, I love the full circle moment of like Flojo to Shakari. I'm so happy to see her in the Olympics. She is going to kick ass. And I, she is just like, to see like a black queer woman be at the top of her game in the Olympics is amazing. And who's so unapologetic with her makeup, her lashes. Her lashes aren't aer aerodynamic. Like, can you imagine if she was like barefaced and bald headed? She would smoke all of you guys. There's a recent race where she tripped up at the starting line and she still won. So I'm like, performance enhancing drugs. She could like be on a horse tranquilizer and still smoke you. Like what? She is that girl. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know, I guess it's a little bit different, but I think still it is so cool. Celebrating women, celebrating athletes and for, you know, a very rare time, celebrating American achievements. <laughs> Happy 4th of July, guys. And if you did like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And let me know if you want to see that Serena Williams style spotlight, because I actually kind of feel like I have to do it because it was impossible to pick out one of her iconic outfits. And make sure to subscribe to this channel because I post videos every Thursday. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more content. And if you like my outerwear outfit and you wanna know all about where I get my outerwear and my half marathon training, I have a Patreon where I talk all about that. I'll have it linked down below. It's patreon.com slash And with that, have a happy, happy day. Bye.